Hi Singapore, this is Liverpool legend John Barnes and you're cruising with the guys on 938 Live Sports. From 938 Live. This is Formula One driver Fernando Alonso. Hi Singapore, I'm Jürgen Klinsmann. Hi, I'm Martin Tyler. This is Annika Sorenstein. Hi Singapore, this is Johnny Wilkinson. You're locked on to the best, best in sports. sports. Cheers. You're listening to Singapore's longest-running and only sports talk show on radio. 16 years and still going strong. A good Saturday to you and welcome to Sports Zone on 9.3 Live. I'm Raj Kumar and today we turn the focus on regional football and uh, Asian football as well. Of course, we all know that tonight is the big match at the National Stadium. Uh, more than 85% of tickets have been sold as of last night. We are, of course, talking about our Singapore Lions versus Malaysia in the AFF Suzuki Cup. It's the final Group B match for both countries while at the Jalan Besar Stadium, Myanmar will take on Thailand. So the, the, the Thais, of course, lead the group by six points. They're already through to the semi-finals. Uh, Singapore Lions have three following uh, the win over Myanmar on Wednesday night. That was a 4-2 win. And uh, Myanmar have only one point so far, and uh, along with Malaysia as well. So uh, Singapore, Myanmar and Malaysia are technically all still uh, in the running for to qualify as the second best team from Group B. From Group A last night, the Vietnamese qualified after beating the Philippines uh, 3-1 in Hanoi. And so Vietnam have seven points. They qualify at the top of uh, Group A. The Philippines have six points. Uh, Indonesia finish in third after their 5-1 hammering of Laos. Um, so, so let's now hear from... Uh, so let's for the next couple of minutes, you'll hear from Singapore's national coach, Bern Stanger, along with Malaysia's coach, Dola Saleh. We'll also hear from our Lions midfielders, Haris Harun and... Zulfami Arifin, along with our former national uh, players as well, and in Alexander Durich and Rafi Ali. But at the moment, let's uh, hear from the media conference. This uh, is exclusive stuff that you'll be hearing for the next couple of minutes. Uh, starting first with uh, the thoughts of the match from head coach Bern Stanger, followed by Dola Saleh. Coach Stanger, we'll start with you first. Yeah, just, just a few words, I think. We all together are looking forward to have a great football day tomorrow here in Singapore. That's exactly that what our game needs. A full packed stadium, a derby, committed players. That's football on, on a level which we need here in this part of the world. And I'm really looking forward to see this match tomorrow. It's a first match for Singapore in a fully packed stadium here and I'm quite excited to see this match tomorrow and hopefully both teams can perform on a very good level to promote our game and to win the hearts of Singaporean football fans. As you know we have a team without any foreigners or former foreigners, local boys. We have a very very young team, eight players are uh, players who can play the sea games uh, next year and it's exciting to see how they perform tomorrow we are focused we are uh, committed and uh, we are looking forward to see this match tomorrow it seems like what the coach said okay uh, we are actually looking forward uh, to play against Singapore and uh, we try to give something to the Malaysians and uh, of course desperately we need a win to make sure that we to qualify, but it's, I believe it's not easy. And the Singaporean, of course, to play with the spectators, the fans from Singapore, mostly I think about 30,000, 40,000, of course, but uh, we will give the very best and uh, to show that some, something new from uh, our Malaysian football. Yeah, we, we have still 20 players available for tomorrow's match, as you know. A key player by Haki and another key player, Shadan, are out. And we have to substitute both. And uh, we will see how we will manage that. Today is the last training session. And after that, we will think about We will find a solution. We um, can trust our team. And uh, we are playing at home. And we have to find a way. Okay, it's a miss, you know, it's not so easy to experience players, but I think we are all well prepared and we know what we have to do. We have to win as well, because uh, you are never sure in football what's going on with Myanmar and Thailand, and we shouldn't be 
so arrogant and say Myanmar is the weakest team, they have even a chance to qualify if we make mistakes. That's why we are focused for our own performance, only for our game, and we will find a way uh, to substitute two key players. That's Singapore's national coach Bernstanger. Before him was uh, Dola Saleh, the Malaysian coach. And uh, we'll hear from uh, Coach Bern in a minute. But the Malaysian media also asked Dola Saleh how he felt from going from uh, the role of a national player and now as the national coach, especially in a derby of this magnitude. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> uh, you know, as, as a player, once the game finished, that's it. They just forget about it. But as a coach, you have to, you know, you have to study whatever weakness, strength, everything. And uh, it's not easy. It's a very tough job for a coach. And uh, it's more difficult. It's more pressure. <laughs> uh, especially, I just knew, knew, I knew with the team, only one month, almost one month with the players. Uh, four months signed with the uh, national team uh, but with the players only one month so it's not easy but uh, we're getting better every each game so hopefully we can do something Yeah, as you know if you have a strategy and you, your strategy is attacking football to show something, follow the tendency in the world, play attacking football then you must be aware if you have a bunch of youngsters, we have, as I mentioned, eight players. Six players are coming from other commitments in the last uh, 12 months. And they are very, very young. Then you must be aware that there are some departs, departments in the game you, you will lack. And uh, these are concerns I have, of course. But our strategy is uh, believe in our way, believe in our strategy, and that's why we have to live with that. I am absolutely sure that those youngsters, eight, I mentioned eight, will be ready in maybe one or two tournaments for great moments here in Singapore football. That is the only way. We, we go and I have to live with that concerns, we have to work on it, but if you go this way, together with the Federation, to rebuild a national team for the next level, you have to risk something. That's why I'm so independent to tell you that we believe in these players and we can live with that, whatever comes out in this tournament. That's a strength that gives confidence and we will go this way, there is no other way. We are here in Southeast Asia, you know, and my young players are saying the game is extremely fast. It's much faster than S-League. And, uh, you know, we have to adapt this level of football. I just give a gentle reminder what's going on if we play Japan, Korea, and what's going on if we go overseas to play European teams, you know. And my belief, my deep belief is we can achieve that in the next few years with uh, a couple of youngsters we have. That's a way, and that's why we have to live with concerns in our defending department. You just heard from Singapore's national coach Bern Stanger and the Malaysian coach Dola Saleh. Uh, they both were speaking at the pre-match media conference which took place just yesterday afternoon. You're listening to Sports Zone on 93 Live and today we are counting down to tonight's big match at the National Stadium. It is of course our Singapore Lions versus Malaysia. Both are still in contention to reach the semi-finals. Uh, you just heard from both coaches uh, and we also caught up with uh, Alexander Durich, our Singapore's former national striker. Uh, he of course won in 2012 with the Lions. Uh, when they were crowned champions in, in, in 2012 in Bangkok. And uh, Andre Achak. Andre Achak spoke to him Thursday on Thursday morning during the news. And Andre first asked Alex about his thoughts of playing in front of a full crowd. Look, it's always a big game that we play against uh, our neighbour. So it uh, never will be easy playing against Malaysia. But uh, we are in the position which one uh, is... Uh, we just need a draw. And uh, Malaysia must win to, to have any chance to progress. You know? So... Uh, for us, you know, we just have to be careful and uh, um, not to go into the game kind of thinking that will be special, that will be kind of easy because we kind of always have a good game against Malaysia. But yeah. 
saying that uh, never also not good to think of to go into the game uh, to to kind of play for draw. Um, also very dangerous uh, when you're uh, trying to secure this one point. Uh, so I, I I believe with a full full uh, national stadium Saturday I I can't see why there will be no full. Uh, um, and then um, I think that we definitely will be. I definitely see that um, Singapore will progress and uh, uh, win the game on Saturday. Now we have to remember that the boys are going to be playing in front of a huge local Singapore crowd at the National Stadium. Do you think this may be too much pressure for the Lions? No, uh, I believe there's, um, they only can um, kind of help them. No, I don't think so. They will be make them under pressure. I think it's uh, always nice to play against uh, at home and uh, the full full stadium. And um, so I think they will just uh, can uh, you know kind of boost them, boost them to give them more, more strength and power to 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 play better. I think they 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 can play much better what they they playing at the moment. So that is good. There's still room for improvement in um, in our in our squad, and uh, and it's good to see different players scoring goals. So it's I definitely can see there is uh, with a uh, full uh, national uh, full crowd and uh, you know everybody behind us. Our, national team, I think definitely we can uh, get good results you know, on Saturday. Okay. Now, the the reality is the Lions are going to be without Shadan Sulaiman and uh, by Haki Kaizan, who's suspended after picking up a second yellow card. How big a loss do you think uh, this is going to be to the team? Well, it's uh, it's it's pity for Shadan because um, he was my former nas- uh, national uh, teammate and it's never never easy when you lose um, uh, your you know main midfield midfield player plus uh, uh, Bahaki uh, got his second yellow card so he'll be out so you have already two two first eleven players out of the game and um, and then will be some uh, shifting of the players because definitely Harris will probably go back in the defense and they will be looking for the player uh, to come new new from the player but but that's opportunity again for the some players who you know to come in from the bench because they're all national players you have to understand this is not a team it's a squad and uh, players i think who come in they have to show they you know they deserve to be there and they play so it's um i still believe in our, our boys and uh, and I, I i don't see any problem is when the new players come and um and uh, play in that position so Yes, bit uh, bit bit um, worried uh, because it's an early early stage of the uh, tournament, and we lo- we already lost one um, uh, main midfield player. But um, that's how is it? That's how the football. So yeah. Singapore's former national striker Alexander Durich, who won, uh, the the who won with the Lions in 2012 in Bangkok. Of course, we're talking about the fourth time that the Lions were crowned AFF Suzuki Cup champions. He was speaking to Andre Achak on Thursday morning. Now we caught up with our Zulfami Arifin. Zulfami, of course, is the Lions' 12 midfielder, and he came on for the injured Sharan Sulaiman on Wednesday evening. And uh, Zulfami is expected to start tonight against Malaysia. And Zul says, uh, you know, they they're going to try to beat the Tigers for Shadan Sulaiman. Yeah, this team, I think more of us, like all of us, want to, we need more for him uh, and also for the team. More for Shadan uh, because he's, he's done a lot for us. Then, since he's getting a bad, bad injury, you know, as uh, as footballers, this is one of the worst things that can happen to us. So, I think we need to, because he himself still want to play even though he know he can now. So, we need to win for him. Uh. Okay, and uh, well, of course, the next match is against our arch rivals Malaysia. Uh, mm. So, your th- your some some of your thoughts just before the game. Mm, I think uh, we we shouldn't think that we are which, but naturally, we still feel that it's our one of our more important games because it's our rival. Cause the rivalry is always there, but <clears throat> for us, I think we just take this game as a normal game and try to start off like how we start against. Don't mind the first one. For us, I think it's better for us to go for the win. We, we don't care about what uh, the other side result is. So I think we look forward for the next game to go for a win. We don't play for a draw. National midfielder Zulfami Arifin. And if he starts tonight, we wish him the very best. And his fellow midfielder, Haris Harun, I believe tonight will have to take uh, will have to play a defensive role because of uh, the suspended by Haki Kaizan. Haris, of course, was the, the toast of the town when he scored two goals against Myanmar three nights ago at the National Stadium. And uh, we first asked, uh, we spoke to Haris yesterday. And here are his opening thoughts ahead of uh, tonight's match. I think uh, it's... Uh going to be a good match lah, between both teams. Mm, for us, uh, I think over the years, both teams have uh, know each other very well. 
the last two, we are, we were, you know, Malaysia was champion in 2010, we were champion after that in 2012. So, and you know, there's always this little bit of uh, rivalry, this uh, little bit of, you know, tense feeling, you know, when, when, when we, we meet. And uh, the fact that we know each other so well, you know, and now that, uh, uh, you know, we, we know what to, to, kind of what to expect from, from them and they know what to expect from us, you know, just makes it a little bit more tastier, you know, and uh, well, for me, it's, uh, like, like I said, the players on the field uh, will, will make the difference, like, will decide how, how, how things uh, happen and uh, it, it all depends on how, uh, who turns up and, you know, who wants it more. Uh, I think for me, yeah, pressure in every game that we go in, you know, like, there was pressure even in the last game we went in because we knew that nothing more than uh, a victory was needed to keep us and we overcame that and this is a different sort of pressure and I think uh, we have to learn or you know we have to like or you know try to, to use it to our advantage and furthermore we are playing at home you see you know we can expect a full house uh, sell out crowd to come and support us you know these people only support us so you know we have to try to make it uh, you know, to our advantage, lah. Take it, make it to our advantage. You know, in this game, and uh, uh, for us is to to use a lot of our hit. You know, because you know, it depends on on, on results. You know, we, we may still go through with a draw, but then again, you know, you go into a game feeling positive. You know, especially when you're at home, you wanna wanna go and get the goals. You know, you wanna get the points. You know, you don't wanna to to turn your back around. Or, you know, look around and you know. You rely on anyone, you know. You just want to get the job done and keep moving on. So that is how uh, our mindset will be. You know, we are we are trying to go and get the result and get the get the job done. Singapore's national midfielder Haris Harun, and you just heard from Haris Zulfami Arifin, along with our former national striker Alexander Durich, our Singapore's current national coach Bern Stanger, and Malaysia's coach Dola Sali. Let's hope for a great match uh, tonight at the National Stadium. It's going to kick off at 8 p.m. You can catch it live on Octo, and if there are still tickets available, you can go online at sportsuptics.com.sg. So time now for the news headlines. When we return, we'll speak to Steve Darby, uh, who was the former championship winning coach with Home United in the S League. He's now uh, coaching at Mumbai City FC. So we'll hear more about uh, the Indian Super League experience. And uh, all that is coming up right after the news headlines. Hey Singapore, this is Liverpool legend Ian Rush. For all your football news, stay tuned to 938 Live Sports. And welcome back to part two of Sports Zone. I'm Raj Kumar, and uh, today we are t- we are counting down to the preview of uh, the clash between our Singapore Lions and Malaysia taking place at the National Stadium. Uh, you just in the first half of the show you heard from uh, the likes of the national coaches of both teams in Bernstang and Dola Sale. We also heard from Singapore's midfielders in Zulfami Arifin and Haris Harun. Now moving on to still continuing with the theme of our uh, regional and Asian football, uh, we'll now turn the focus to the Indian Super League. This of course uh, started about five weeks ago. It is a three-month league and uh, there are eight teams uh, that are competing in the inaugural season of the ISL and uh, what they've done is they managed to go and recruit uh, several former World Cup stars like uh, David James, Mikel Silvestre, Luis Garcia, Alessandro Del Piero, Marco Matarazzi, just to name a few and these are the, and of course uh, Nicholas and Elka, these are the players that have been recruited by the eight ISL clubs and they are, they've got huge support from the from the glamour sector as well, with the Bollywood stars like uh, Hrithik Roshan and John Abraham, uh, you know, uh, co-owning some of the teams, a few of the teams, and they've also got uh, support from uh, the Indian cricket stars like Sachin Tendulkar and Saurabh Ganguly. Well, Home United's uh, former championship-winning coach uh, Steve Darby, uh, he's now in charge of the team at uh, Mumbai City FC. We spoke to him about a week ago when the team was. Uh, had completed about nine matches. They were in fifth position then. Now, after two straight losses, they've dropped to the bottom of the league. But uh, let's hear now from Steve Darby. And I, I first asked him about uh, his initial thoughts on, on the Indian Super League. Well, it's been three hectic weeks. Uh, we had one one day a particular disaster uh, when we went down 5-1. We basically went down to a fellow called Ilano, who used to play for Man City, a Brazilian. He destroyed us with his set pieces. 
So what we've done since then is we've really, really tightened up on our back back four and, and goalkeeper. And since that game, five games, we haven't considered a goal. Uh, we haven't scored too many either. We've had two one nil wins and three nil nil draws. But uh, the first thing we felt was we've got to stop getting beat. So at the moment, we're lying fourth in the league, but the league is so, so tight. Uh, if we'd won the last game, we'd have gone top, and it's still possible for the bottom team, uh, to rise, which is Delhi Dynamos at the moment, to rise and, and win the league. It is really, really exciting, tight league. Now, talking about the standard of the league, you've had a chance to play all the other opponents. So in, how would you summarise the standard of uh, the initial season of the Indian Super League? Well, there's been some t- t- tremendous teams. Uh, you know, at, at, to be honest, at the moment, the two teams at the top, Atletico Calcutta and uh, Chennai, deserve to be there. I think what they did the best was they actually employed their coach first and then brought the coach in for the draft, and he chose his players. And then they, then they chose further players, because uh, it's quite a complicated drafting system here. Uh, but what it meant was that they got their players ourselves and a couple of other teams, our players were chosen for us, then we were brought in. So in some cases, you have players you're not really going to use very much, but others, such as uh, Chennai, and they have, they have Mendy of France, Sylvester, X-Man United, uh, Elano, uh, two Colombian internationals, they have drafted themselves very, very well, and, and they're a strong side. Same with Atletico de Cota. They, had a, they were basically a base of Atletico Madrid players uh, who've all played in the Spanish League, La Liga. So you've got quality professionals in the Calcutta side. And in the case of Mumbai City, how did you and Peter Reed, uh, the manager, how did the both of you get roped in for the job? Uh, it's like most things in football. you just just uh, right place, right time. Somebody in the system knew me. I'd worked here it before uh, for three months in, in Calcutta, and I'd spent another month working for the Indian government in Manipur uh, doing a football education program. And they contacted us. They'd seen us work in Thailand where we had quite good results. And so they just contacted us, approached us, and we said, yeah, three months is fantastic. Uh, you know, everyone's got different you know, to time scales. Peter's doing a lot of work in TV. I've just done some Malaysian TV work as well. So it fitted in perfectly. What was the initial target set by the both of you as far as the team is concerned? Well, I think the word target, and I've said this frequently, is an Asian word, an Asian football word. Football, you can't, I don't think you can have a target. I think your aim as a footballer to win every game. Uh, every, every player, every coach wants to win every game. Now, if you do that, You'll, you'll, you'll achieve any target you set. Now, and the reality is, of course, no one wins every game. But we go out there to win every game. And long term in football, you know, is next week, Raj. They, uh, you, know, you, can, you can talk about your projects, your philosophies, all this stuff. Football is about winning games, professional football. And that's all that matters. I was presented by Mr. Lee Hao Shing, who was a great chairman at Home United, with a, with a football shirt. And the name on the back was Must Win. <laughs> because you must win this week. You must win this week. Uh, and everything is must win in, in, in Asian football. And I remember when you were back here in the, coaching the S League clubs and you used to say when, when the media used to ask you, so what's the target for, for the match? And you'd simply say, well, obviously the target is to win. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, our first step in some of the games here was not to lose. And that meant, but you, you, whenever you get the ball, you try and score, don't you? It, it, you know, football is grossly overcomplicated, I think, by some of the, uh, the pundits. And, I'm, and I've done a fair bit of the pundit work. Some of it's grossly overcomplicated. The bottom line is, when you've got the ball, you try and score. And when you haven't got the ball, you do your best to get it back and try and stop the other team scoring. If you work on those two basic tenants, you know, the, the rest of the game flows from there. And talking about scoring goals, could you shed some light on uh, the marquee players in your squad? I'm referring to, of course, Nicholas Anelka and Freddie Lundberg. Well, unfortunately, Freddie has been injured. He's, co- he's coming injured, and he hasn't. He's played only about 49 minutes in the last 900, uh, so it's been difficult to assess that. But Nicholas Anelka has been on a different planet. Uh, he is probably the best player I've worked with in, in my career. Uh, he's a delight to work with. He still wants to learn. He still wants to work. He he loves doing shooting practices, and the the media image of Nicholas Anelka is far from the reality. He's one of the nicest blokes you'll ever meet. He's quiet. He's humble. Uh, he mixes well with the local lads. You know, he's been an absolute delight to work with. You know, and I've got to be honest, before I'd met him, I thought, oh, you know, you know the image was going to be a problem child. 
exact opposite. If I said wear all pink training gear, he'd come out in all pink training gear. He's always on time. He works hard at the end with the, with the young Indian boys. You know, so absolute credit to the profession he is. That's a very interesting uh, comment that you made about uh, the former French striker. Now, talking about the Indian players themselves, how would you rate their performances so far in terms of the league or in terms of your club? Basically, it sounds silly, but we're running two teams. You're running the foreign team and the Indian team. So we say to the players, you know, you're not trying to, because we have to have five Indians in no matter what, and six foreigners are allowed. Now, in some games, we've gone with six Indians because we've had some really good lads. Because uh, in the draft system, you know, you get extremes of ability. Uh, and some of our players have been outstanding. Our goalkeeper, Subrata Paul, has done tremendous. Uh, you know, he's, 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 a, he's an absolute nutcase, uh, which is you know, a credit to the goalkeeping profession because most of them are mad. But he, he's, like, he, he's up there with them. We've had some very good performances from the experienced players, such as uh, Deepak Mundial. Uh, so he's shown to be a true pro. And what we've done is we've, We've used the young, the young Indians with the massive energy in their work rate on the, on the, on the wide side. So a boy called Subhash Singh uh, has particularly performed well for us. And hopefully you know, he's going to get national team recognition now. Uh, there's been a few boys who have risen to the occasion, not just in our team, but in other teams as well. Uh, they rare Surat Chuk Chakrabuti. He's he's come from nothing and he's standing out in a midfield team for Delhi. Uh, you know, he's keeping a foreigner out of the out of the team. So you know, some of the boys have risen. To be fair, the other side, some of the boys have frozen because we've got crowds of about a hundred thousand in some games, and you know it's averaging about thirty, thirty-five thousand as well, just for, you know, for some of the other smaller venues. Now, in general, would you say that the Indian Super League is helping India to further evolve as a footballing nation? Oh, absolutely, Matt. Having coached in the I-League and coached in this league now, it's day and night. Uh, you've got better pitches, that's the first thing, and that's the most important thing. Again, all the things I used to moan about in Singapore, they've almost eradicated here. The pitches are fantastic, the media is positive and enthusiastic, and of course, what they've done is they've linked in with the stars. They've, they've got the cricketers and the Bollywood stars, who are the real stars, we all know that, and they've tapped them into the system, so the general public is following them and the football. The football public are always going to follow them anyway, uh, or, you know, follow us, but, the, but they, they've got new fans coming in, and it really is, it, it's, it's, like, it's the number one sport in the country at the moment. It's not going to take cricket's place, we all know that, and I, I don't expect that to happen. I, I love cricket as well, which most Indian journalists find amazing that my two heroes as a kid were Farouk Engineer and Gordon Banks, and I've actually been lucky enough to meet Farouk Engineer since I've been over here. But, I mean, the way they've linked that in is fantastic, and with that, stars has come their financial investment there's got to be rich people in singapore who could pile money into the s league there's got to be and you know what we what we've got to do in singapore is find a reason for them to want to, to go into the s league because the s league used to be great i i love my time there you know and it's sad when i read about some of the things that are happening now touching on the s league have you managed to catch up with your your fellow englishman as in trevor morgan who used to coach at Sengkang Marine and Gopang United, and now he's uh, the head coach at uh, the Kerala Blasters. Yeah, he's working with uh, David James down in Kerala. Of course, his his uh, president is uh, Sachin Tendulkar, so he can't complain about that. And he's doing a great job as usual. Trevor, great professional. Uh, he, he had a vast knowledge of the Indian players because he, he won the league with East Bengal and is well known in India. Uh, and he, and has, he's doing a, a top job. Uh, he still has great memories like myself of Singapore and you know, loves the place. Now, Steve, having been a championship winning coach uh, of Home United in the S League during your time here, what have you heard about the initiatives and the plans for the league as it moves into its 20th year uh, in a couple of months' time? Well, I mean, there's, there's some uh, difficult rules to follow. It's going to be almost hard to actually select your squad. But, but what I think, first I'd like to say, I think it was magnificent that Ballastia uh, won the cup. But it's great to see a club that is doing the right things on a limited budget succeed. Uh, and I know people like Tava have put in a lot of money, of, of their own money, and I, I respect anyone who puts their own money into football. So, you, you know, it's good to see people like that getting success. Uh, what is sad, I think, is the Lions 12, because I think the Lions 12, why, whilst it's a good concept for the, for the development of the national team in, in Singapore, I think it's destroyed the S-League. Uh, when you have 30-odd best players uh, have gone out of the 
out of the league, it has to be, make the, the league suffer. And of course, I mean, I used to get moaned at for, for always being uh, opinionated in, in Singapore. But in 2003, I used to say, you need long-term programs to get Chinese kids playing the game because of the population ratio. I still don't see any Chinese kids coming through, uh, and which is sad because the bigger the population pool, the better the football will be. Now, Steve, just before you go, you and uh, Peter Reid used to coach uh, Thailand's national team. What is your impression of the current Thai squad that's now coached by Kathy Suk Sonomong? Yeah, well, basically, it's uh, the, the Thai squad at the moment is quite a new, a new one. Uh, I think they've got a fantastic coach in Zico. The players love him, the people love him, and it's genuine love. He, he, you know, he's a great player. He's also a nice bloke. He, he, in fact, he was my assistant coach at the Sea Games in 2009, so I spent two weeks in a, sink, in a, in a double room with him. Great bloke. And the players will play for him, believe me. Uh, but he's gone for a young side, not, not many more veterans. Though they tell me that a 50-year-old Ted Sack Chiman nearly got in the team. Uh, close to 50, I think. Uh, and Singapore, of course, um, I'm, with the assistant coach there is AD, one of my ex-players, so I'm delighted for him. I mean, that's one of, the, one of the very good things that I think about Singapore football. They have brought through people like Sundram, uh, AD Iskander, uh, Subramanian, they're keeping them in the system and getting them involved, which is very, very important. Because these lads are good coaches. You know, they know their football, they were great players. So you've got the good young people coming through like AD and Zico, you know, and that's got to be good for the game. Who's going to win? I've got a funny feeling that uh, Thailand have got it because they've got this absolute nationalistic pride and there's some great players in Thailand. So you think Thailand are going to beat the Lions at a home ground in front of? I, I, I think so. Yes. Uh, I mean, I think it's it's a good call bringing back Hassan Sonny. I think he's a top goalkeeper. Uh, you know, I mean, so I all, I think a player like Bahaki has improved massively. When I saw him as a kid, I thought he was going to be a decent player, but a bit wild. But he matured as a person off the pitch, and that really turned him, I think, into an excellent player. Hadis Haron, I think, should have gone abroad a few years ago. He made the mistake of staying. Uh, well, I think maybe National Service made that decision for him. And he should have gone abroad. He could have been a great player, I think. And that was head coach of Mumbai City FC. Of course, Mumbai City plays in the in the Indian Super League. And uh, that was Steve Darby speaking to us more than a week ago. And uh, two key points that he mentioned, that Nicholas Anelka is not the bad boy that we've all been made to read and and uh, and hear about him. And uh, he also predicted uh, Thailand to beat Singapore at the National Stadium Three days, even uh, three days before the kickoff. So, and that was Steve Darby, former Home United coach, uh, speaking grass as in his role as Mumbai City FC's head coach. Uh, time now for the traffic update. When we come back, we'll talk about a sports entertainment related event that's taking place in seven days' time. So, time now for traffic watch. Hey, Singapore, this is WWE superstar Seth Rollins, and you are listening to the guys on 938 Live Sports. <laughs> Okay, welcome back to the final stretch of Sports Zone. I'm Raj Kumar, and uh, of course, we know that Singapore is now becoming a hub for several sporting events, uh, including rugby, football, tennis, Formula One, netball, uh, even running as well. And next Saturday at the Bukit Gombak Sports Hall, uh, some of our Singaporeans will be involved in an event called Breakthrough. Uh, it's a professional wrestling event, and and, and uh, we caught up with uh, the co-founder of uh, the organization known as Singapore Pro Wrestling. They've been around for three years. Uh, it's SPW for short, and I spoke to Andrew Tang, who's the co-founder of uh, SPW. I spoke to him this morning, and uh, he starts off by telling us a little bit about uh, the three-year history of SPW. Okay, so SPW is the only pro wrestling promotion in Singapore. So we, like any promotion, we offer training as well. So we, so we train uh, uh, aspiring pro wrestlers in Singapore who want to live the dream. So we we do different styles of pro wrestling, such as uh, the American style of pro wrestling, which you know, which I'm sure you're quite familiar with in from uh, the what you see on the WWE programming and TNA programming. Then we have uh, strong style wrestling, like uh, basically that it's uh, more familiar with all the Japanese fans. And you know, some from time to time, you just try to implement uh, lucha libre training as well. So uh, just like any other promotion, you our aim is to have uh, regular house shows. So most of our house shows are usually organized every two months. Yeah, so from time to time, uh, we will showcase uh, international talent, but the main focus would be building up the local talent from our school. 
And how many members do you have and how do you train, uh, Andrew? Mm, at the moment, we have about 20 students. So we do functional bodyweight training exercises that will aid in building physical strength and conditioning so that we can last through our matches. And then uh, the pro wrestling specific drills we'll do such as rolls, uh, proper technique of bumping, proper execution of moves, um, how to act, uh, give and take a move well, uh, piecing out various pro wrestling sports together. And of course, the most important thing is to have uh, to build the match psychology so that we can tell a story in each match that we do. And trust me, that, that would take a very long time. But, you know, of course, through experience, only then uh, will we gain experience and, you know, go up to the next level. Now, staying on the note of training, uh, who do you have trained coaches of, for what you do or do you invent your own moves and techniques? Uh, our head trainer is actually uh, my partner, uh, Vadim Koyajin. So he has over 12 years of experience in pro wrestling. So he trains, uh, before he starts pro wrestling, right, he, he trained in Canada. So, you know, Canada, you know, they, they have very, they have very, very strong system of pro wrestling training. So he, he brought, he, he, took, he took back the experience and, you know, he, he brought it across Russia and he taught, like, countless of students in Russia. Uh, but from time to time, we have, international wrestlers coming down as well to give us uh, training clinics. So, like, just two weeks ago, we had an Australian wrestler, quite a well-renowned Australian wrestler coming down to, you know, giving us tips and pointers and giving up, teaching us some new moves, teaching us new sports. So, uh, and I have, just this year, um, so this year I had a Hong Kong guy who, who came down. He has about nine years of experience from UK and Japan. Yeah, so he, he taught us new drills and New, new sets of moves and piecing up the sport together and teaching us like various match psychology as well. So we have uh, various contrast, contrasting styles and we try to, you know, put everything together and make it a best match ever. Now, safety is of paramount concern for any sport uh, that an athlete is involved in. How do you and your fellow wrestlers uh, account for that? So uh, that's why we always emphasize on the proper technique of uh, bumping and doing the basics well. Because you know, for a pro wrestling move, when you do, when you do, be, be it, you know, whether it's a normal choke slam or be it a frog splash, it's it's always a few different kinds of bumps. So if actually, you know, it's just the technique that is different. Yeah, you know, but you know, at the end state when you land, it should be the same. So you know, you just have to practice from time to time. Uh, that proper execution of the, of the moves and then you know we would use a train a soft rate safety mat first so once the wrestlers are more confident about taking the moves and giving the moves then we will remove the mat and we'll actually do it on the ring yeah if let's say the moves is pretty complicated yeah, but for those basic moves no we will just train on the train in the ring itself Andrew tell us briefly about next Saturday's event at the Bukit Gongbak Sports Hall <laughs> Okay, it will be our seventh major event, and finally there will be the debut of the inaugural SPW Tag Team Championship. So it will be a historical moment for SPW and certainly for Singapore, and it will showcase various homegrown talents and uh, international wrestlers from Hong Kong and Australia. Yeah, this Hong Kong wrestler, uh, you know, he's he's the promoter of uh, HKWF, so his promotion has been growing strong for about four, four five years or so. Yeah, so he's the same guy who I mentioned that has about nine years of experience uh, in pro wrestling, you know, wrestling, wrestling in UK and Japan. Your event is, of course, called Breakthrough 2014. Uh, going through some of the matches taking place on December the sixth, uh, could you identify two fights which you would like to highlight? Okay, besides the tag team match, uh, the two matches to look out for would be the inter-promotional match, uh, uh, showcasing the Hong Kong wrestler against one of the top rising stars of uh, SPW. That is uh, Sergeant Nick, because uh, he's a hard worker and he has certainly like you know built a name for himself and he's he's. He is, he is known for doing all his high flying moves and stuff. Uh, well, you know the Hong Kong guy is known for his uh, Japanese strong style of wrestling and storytelling. Uh, the second match that I would say that some someone something that to look out for would actually be GM of SPW. He would be making his de- in ring debut against the number one baby face of uh, SPW, the Eurasian Dragon. So after a year long of uh, losing of Eurasian Dragon, so the Eurasian Dragon will try his best to gain one more W against the general manager of SPW. <laughs> It sounds really intriguing and exciting now. <laughs> I also understand that there will be a women's bout as well. Yes, yes. Uh, after a long absence from uh, her previous match against uh, one of our one of our 
pro wrestler Tiberian. Uh, Alexis Liu will, uh, will go against one of the top rising wrestlers of Australia, Savannah Summers. She's a multi-time Australian champion, so she has been traveling around in Australia and you know winning titles and stuff. So it will definitely be Alexis Lee toughest challenge up to date. Yeah. And that was 25-year-old Andrew Tang, who is the co-founder of uh, Singapore Pro Wrestling. He and he and his uh, and and his buddies will all be putting on a show next Saturday at the Bukit Gombak Sports Hall. Uh, it's called Breakthrough 2014 for tickets. Uh, on this particular sports entertainment event, you can go on to cystic.com and find your find your tickets. It is supposed to be the biggest uh, pro wrestling event staged by a Singapore company in the, the history of the Republic. So, uh, we hope you enjoyed this edition of Sports Zone. Uh, till the next time, I'm Raj Kumar for 93 Live.